Hi friends, Catherine here from Research Rockstar. Thanks for joining me here today. Today I'd like to talk about survey research. And the reason why I want to talk about this is that I, I know, and many of you know, that there is a very particular focus right now on improving the quality of survey data. I think a lot of this is driven by the fact that now survey research is just part of a, a broader data-driven decision ecosystem, right? So, so many organizations these days have really embraced data-driven decision-making, and they have bigger ecosystems of where they're getting various information for that. Survey research is certainly one of those sources, and there are many others. But now that there are a lot of different sources of information, what we are often seeing is that there's a higher expectation for rigor. That is, if we are going to do survey research, many clients expect us to be able to demonstrate that the survey data is of truly high quality. In fact, in my experience, I would say there's more emphasis on survey data quality these days than I've seen in a while. Part of that may also be because there's a bit of a negative halo right now over survey research because of some things that have gone on in the press with political polls and things like that the last few years. Um, but whether it's for both reasons or other reasons, um, when I what I definitely see is that there is a lot of emphasis on if we're doing survey research, it has to be rigorous. And I have to really be confident that I am going to be creating data that is truly accurate and reliable. One of the ways of improving potentially the quality of our survey data is by conducting mixed mode surveys. So let's take a few minutes to make sure we all know what mixed mode surveys are, what some of the options are, and what some of the pros and cons are. So first of all, at a highest level, when we talk about mixed mode surveys, um, as a comp as simple definition, basically a mixed mode survey is any survey that uses more than one mode. I know, a little bit silly. But that's what it is. Now, you will sometimes see people refer to multi-mode surveys, especially if you read some of the different journals that serve the marketing and market research space. Um, in some of those journals, you'll see the references to multi-mode, and some will refer to mixed mode. Um, but when I see these references, they do usually mean the same thing. Now, when we think about this, what are the different modes? Well, these days, there are a lot of different ways we can uh, collect survey data. So while many people do default to online surveys, technically speaking, we can be doing face-to-face -face research. Great for authenticity, right? Um, if you're doing face-to-face -face research, if you're doing mall intercepts or intercepts at other in-person events, or even some folks are doing more door-to-door -door research, obviously there's an authenticity benefit there. Interactive voice response is an option. Of course, mail surveys, so sending postal mail to invite people to an, either an online or a phone survey, um, or to actually include a paper survey as part of that. Um, online surveys, which of course many of us do a lot of, different types of telephone surveys, landline surveys, cell phone surveys, and of course now there's some really interesting things going on with text messaging as a way to have people participate in survey research. So we have a lot of options for collecting survey data these days. All right, so that's great. There's this idea of being able to do mixed mode surveys, but how do we actually do it? So if we think at the very highest level, there are a couple of points of view to think of. One I like to call researcher's choice. So this is when I, as the researcher, am planning a survey project, and I know that my population is diverse. For example, I might say, you know, there are some people in my audience who really are unlikely to respond to an online survey they might be more likely to respond to a paper survey delivered by postal mail. And if that's the case, then that's great. Then maybe rather than trying to force everybody into the online survey, I should be segmenting my sample and inviting people to participate in the way that's going to get the best data from them, right? The best response rates from those subgroups and the best quality data. So in that case, it's the researcher's choice. Now, what some folks will do is they'll do that sort of as an iterative process. They may not do it right from the beginning. So some folks will say, okay, I know enough about my target population where I'm gonna make some of those decisions right up front. But for other folks, they're using the mixed mode as a way to, um, to have an iterative process. So they might start with email invitations here. So they might say, oh, you know what? I'm going to have email invitations uh, to our survey. And if people respond, great, but if I have non-response, then I'm going to do telephone. I'm going to contact those people by phone and try to collect their data that way. 
oh, I pick up some more people there, fantastic. I still have some non-response. Then at that point, maybe I go to a third mode. Maybe it's door to door or face to face. Uh, maybe it's paper or something else. But in that case, it would be a sequential, um, uh, a sequential effort, in this case, using three different modes. The other option is what I call participant's choice. Um, and I think of this particularly in those situations that I know many of us have been in where you're doing research with a population that's really hard to reach. For example, have you ever done research with a really over-surveyed population? So this is probably going to be really true for some of you who do business-to-business -business research. This, in B2B research, we often find that this is the case where there can be populations that um, are really over-surveyed. And so how do we deal with that? Well, maybe we give the participant some choice. It's an opportunity for them to personalize their survey research experience. So in this case, we might be sending out invitations either by mail or online or phone. And in the invitation process, we're saying to the potential participant, you can respond any way you want. We have two options or three options. That way the participant can choose to participate using the mode that they feel most comfortable with. So what are the advantages of mixed mode surveys? Well, we've already hinted at a couple of them, right? It can help with response rates. Um, if we know that different parts of our audience uh, or different segments of our market that we target would be more responsive to one mode versus another mode, that's fantastic. And by the way, if you're not sure, it may be worth an experiment. You know, see if for one of your upcoming survey research projects, can you do some split sample just so you can figure out for yourself, hey, you know, we'd like to see whether or not there's some variation. Could we potentially be getting a higher response rate if we offered multiple modes? So if you're not sure, it may be worth doing an experiment. It, and part of this also gets to making sure that our data is truly representative. Um, and it's really easy for survey critics or cynics or skeptics uh, to point to issues of non-response bias. And it's true. If I'm doing a survey of a particular target market and less than 1% of the people in that target market that I've invited are responding, of course, logically, I can't help but think, huh, I wonder if that less than 1% is truly representative of the other 99%, right? The fact that 99% of my target market isn't responding is a real concern to me. Um, and so it makes a lot of sense where if you are really concerned about data quality, you do want to make sure that the data you're collecting is actually representing the target market and isn't representing outliers within the target market. So bringing in multimode research can be a way to address that. And for some, in some cases, it actually can reduce cost. Um, now, this will usually be the case for those of you who may be doing in-person research, um, and now you're thinking about trying to move away from in-person research. Um, but there can be different situations with super hard to find populations where your data collection costs are really high. All right, well, maybe if you played around with multi-mode, did a couple of experiments, maybe you would find that you can actually reduce costs by making sure that you're delivering the right option to different participants. So there are some real benefits potentially to be had here. A couple of other potential advantages, it can be increased efficiency. Um, so if I know I'm going to be collecting, for example, for a really big project, um, if I'm planning from the get-go um, having multiple modes, it might be more efficient than troubleshooting as we go along. Somewhat related to that is time savings. Again, this will be more for those larger, more complex projects. But if you are doing projects where data collection can take two weeks, three weeks, or more, and for those of you who do research with hard-to-find populations, we know that can happen. If you start off from the beginning with a multi-mode plan, you may be able to save some time. And frankly, I do think that there is an advantage related to, related to perceived credibility. Again, Unfortunately, as much as I love survey research, there is a little bit of a negative halo these days. And so showing that we have a rigorous way of reaching people who are in our target market, who really do represent the population of interest, could help to boost the um, cred perceived credibility of your survey data. But of course, there are disadvantages. The most widely known one that people often will point to is what we call response effect. 
That is, if I ask you a question in an online survey, you're going to answer one way. If I were to ask you that same question on telephone, you might answer differently. And there have been some really interesting, um, uh, there's been a lot of research on research about this. For example, one study shows that consistently people will give more negative reviews by online data collection. You know, is that because when they're on the phone, people feel more polite? Um, it's, you know, that would be my hypothesis, but I can't really prove it. But we have seen multiple studies that show that you will get more negative answers online, especially when you're doing things like customer satisfaction or brand perceptions research. So that is a challenge, knowing that people respond differently. And that leads us to the second disadvantage, which is analysis complexity. If you're doing significant survey research, then you're going to have to figure out what's the best way for me to combine the data, knowing that there can be differences. Now, there are strategies for doing this. Some of them are a little complex. Um, so I'm also providing links to um, research related to this so that you can get a better handle on what some of those strategies are for adjusting data when you're when you're blending the data from different modes. Um, but the first step is simply to make sure that it's true that your answers are different. So if you do that experiment, for example, if you decide to do an experiment where you split a sample and some people are getting your online survey and some people are getting, say, a, a, a paper survey, take a look at the results. Are they, in fact, different? Maybe they aren't, but they probably will be. <laughs> and in that case, you do have to make some decisions about how you're going to analyze that data. There are also some challenges around wording variations. How I word something for a phone survey is different than how I word it for an online survey and is definitely different than how I word it in a paper survey. Um, so in an ideal world, my questionnaire wording would be optimized for that mode of data collection. So if I am doing multi-mode data collection, I'm either going to, I'm gonna have to make some choices probably some compromises because I'd rather have my wording be consistent across modes um, than adjust it per mode and have even further risks of response effects. So it's not necessarily easy, but there are known strategies. Um, because this is an important topic, actually, um, I recently put together a little compendium on research about mixed mode data collection, and it includes some really great citations. Um, and so there is a free do download available at researchrockstar.com slash mixed mode. Uh, so check it out. Um, do check out the citations, and I'll also put um, a couple of further links here in the show notes. So I hope that was a good conversation for folks, a good topic to think about. If you tend to default to online data collection, maybe this is a good time to just take a little pause and think, is it really still the best thing for all of our projects or should we be experimenting with mixed mode data collection? If you found this useful, please do like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, you can always contact me at Research Rockstar. Thanks.